Hello and welcome to another typing video. You seem to have liked the previous one, so we're gonna do more of them. Surprise, surprise. Uh, in today's, we have a uh, sort of tricky concept. I'm actually gonna show you two solutions to this one. Uh, but as always, we're gonna clone the repo to get started. Uh, typing puzzles. I'm actually going to use Python 3.13 today just because it makes the code slightly simpler, but I will point out that particular thing when we get to it. Uh, let's set that up. Python 3.13, activate that, pip install mypy, you know the drill, just want to show you what versions we're using before we get started, and then we're going to look at puzzle 003. Um, so the puzzle today is sort of based on a bit of code that's, that uh, I ran into at work. Of course, this is a overly simplified version, and I don't think I would actually write code like this in reality, but I'm going to show you what it is and uh, why it is set up in this particular way. So in this uh, code here, we have a metric, just some, some thing that represents an operation and a statistic uh, with particular operations and particular statistics. Uh, it's all just made up, but there's something similar in Century that does the thing. Anyway, um, and how they get represented on the wire is actually a amalgamation of these two strings joined by a colon. Uh, but the code likes to deal with it in these separated entities. So it needs to know whether it's average, needs to know its size, etc. Um, and so you kind of have to parse the value out and then deal with it later on in the code. And at least in this case, it was pretty convenient to utilize literals so that you know exhaustively uh, what you're using. Um, spoilers, we'll actually look at an alternative that sort of uses, but sort of doesn't use literals, and maybe it's a little bit more idiomatic in how I would think about it, um, but it has its own problems. We'll look at that in a bit. Uh, but anyway, this is basically the problem. Uh, the error is going to be on this line because uh, MyPy doesn't know that uh, this split call here is going to result in these particular values here, and of course we've done no validation to actually make that true either, and so MyPy is correct to be like, hey, these aren't your literals, these are just random stirs. That doesn't make any sense. And if we run, of course, if we run MyPy on this, you'll see that it complains in the same way. Argument one to metric has incompatible type stir, expected this literal, and argument two, similarly. Cool. Um, I did want to show you the hints. Well, actually, if you want to solve it yourself, this is where to pause. <laughs> Let's forget to do that. Um, but let's show the hints uh, just to maybe nudge you in the right direction. Um, and this is more of a hint for the first way to solve this, and more, this is more of a hint for the second way to solve this. I'm going to show you both of these just so we have some completeness here, uh, and we'll go from there. So the first hint is that literals are very similar to what other Python concept? And the answer to this is enumeration. So the enum module in Python is uh, very, very similar to uh, literals. And there might be another alternative solution to this which completely rewrite, rewrites away from using these literals, uh, but let's assume that there's some particular need in the code that it needs these to be strings. So it needs these to be literals, so we're still gonna keep that same structure and not actually adjust any part of this. Now, again, you might refactor this to use literals or, or to use enumerations, uh, but let's assume we keep the structure. Okay. Uh, there is actually a trick in MyPy using enums, and it actually knows uh, that an enums value can be narrowed directly to a literal. Now, of course, the way to do this is a little bit clunky. You have to define an enum class. So let's just call it E operation. I don't know, not a great name. Um, and I believe you have to specifically use sternum, and you specifically have to use the class form of it. Otherwise, this doesn't work. Um, I'll show you the non-class form in a sec, just to confirm. But anyway, you can write out an enum using the same string literals that you have here. Now, an astute observer may be like, ah, you're duplicating them, and they don't match up. And yes, that's why I don't really like this solution, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you anyway. We'll do the same for stat as well. E stat, e dot third enum, and then for those duration equals duration and size equals. So MyPy happens to know that if you use sternum and if you define all of these, 
that these are literal values. And so if you access estat.duration.value, it's actually going to be literal duration rather than just stir. Um, there's a, some special, some nice specialization there on uh, enumeration values. And so from there, you can actually uh, use your enums to validate the values. So if we did E operation on up and then do value and E stat dot value, this is basically converting it to the enum and then retrieving the value out. Uh, this has the side effect of if it's an invalid value, it's going to raise. So down here, if we were to do like size two and run this, you'll see that you get a value error, which is, which is great. That's, we've satisfied our validation here. Um, but if we actually run the MyPy, run the MyPy, um, you'll see that this passes now. Uh, and that is because the value, if we were to reveal type on this, the value gets narrowed nicely for fill type. Because it knows that if it is a E operation object, then it must have these literals value. It's kind of neat. Um, yeah, and you, see, you can see here it's inferred, that's what the little question mark means, that it can be any of these literals. Now, the downside to this is, uh, as I mentioned before, you kind of have to duplicate all these values here. Uh, this is a little bit clunky. And you know, if you were to add one here, add one here, you wouldn't necessarily uh, be able to match those up nicely. So there's kind of some downside to this in that these are a little bit separated from each other. But it does work, and this does actually uh, correctly validate that your that you're parsing this uh, in a type-safe way, which is kind of nice. Um, but I wanted to show you a solution that doesn't involve duplication and doesn't involve enums. Enums are also kind of wonky in Python. They're weirdly slow, and they're kind of a giant pile of hacks, and they seem to break in every minor version of Python in some subtle way. But um, yeah, we're going to show a different solution. OK, so the, this second solution involves this second in. So how can one make a user-defined narrowing? Now, when I say narrowing here, I basically mean like MyPy, uh, MyPy can take a type and know that it is a more specific type through some various things. Uh, the most common one that you'll see in code is, is instance. You could have like spitballing here. Python block so it gets highlighted. If you had like a function which takes x as stir or int, uh, and if you did if is instance x stir, then MyPy knows inside this block uh, that the value of x is narrowed to stir. So inside this if this if statement here, it knows there's a you know it's been narrowed. Uh, but you can actually write your own custom user defined narrowing functions, ones that say like take in a value and if it's true. We've narrowed it to something else. There's actually two types of narrowing, uh, user-defined narrowing in Python. There's type guard and type is. Um, without going into too much detail, I basically only use type is anymore. It's kind of the nicer version of type guard uh, because it can narrow in the negative sense as well. But you got to be careful with this. And there's nothing that actually validates that your narrowing is correct. And so this is one of those like places that you poke a hole in the type system to teach it about something that's not necessarily completely true because your 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 type is and type guard limitations can be completely garbage. Anyway, let's show what that would look like. Um, I'm going to show a bad solution first, and then I'm going to adjust it using a little bit of runtime typing. Yes, I know runtime typing not not usually what I recommend, but um, it's going to it's going to make this um, a little bit more succinct, and it's going to remove the duplication. So the first version of this is going to look very similar to the enum one. Um, Let's just say operation values equals, say it is a frozen set of operation. Uh, and if we type, well, frozen set set, yes. We type all those out again, max. You'll just trust that I'm typing it correctly. Oh. Um, I've, I've uh, put it there. You can see I've typed all them out. Um, and if I do the same for stat, and I know you're already screaming, like, why didn't this get highlighted nice? Here? 
I don't know why this doesn't have this index highlighting here. I don't know. Did I typo it? It's tight. It's highlighted nicely there. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe whatever highlighting engine I'm using, uh, or maybe the the grammar for that language doesn't highlight in a type annotation cons. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, so we enumerate these values, um, and then we can make a user-defined narrowing. And I'm going to use type is to do that. Is unused. That's fine. Oh god, why did it reindent this so horribly? We're gonna ignore that. This line's gonna get shorter, so don't worry about it. Uh, so we're gonna define our own user-defined type card by saying is operation. And what this is is a function that takes in one value and returns a Boolean. However, you're gonna type it as returning type is with the type you're narrowing it. So we're gonna say if it takes in a string and returns type is operation. And then we need to write a function that turns a Boolean if this is an operation. Uh, now, normally, you wouldn't be able to just narrow an arbitrary string to a literal, but this is sort of your cheeky way around it. So you can say return uh, bup, 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 s in operation values. I believe there's a proposal in MyPy to make that this just this expression here a custom narrowing itself, since if this string is inside this frozen set, that it must be an operation. But it, I don't think it's implementable. Uh, and then we would do the same thing for stat is stat s to type is stat turn s in stat values cool we have our two custom narrowings now now we need to utilize them in our uh, our function here um, uh, so we can basically say if not is operation up raise value error up if not is stat stat is the value in that. And again, this looks very similar to the enum solution. Of course, we're being a little bit more explicit here with our um, if statements here. But the cool thing is MyPy knows, based on the type annotation, this type is that we put up here, that if this doesn't raise, then this must be narrowed to the proper value. Go ahead and run this through MyPy now. Uh, we'll see that it is happy with this. Now, I told you I would come back to it and fix this sort of duplication that we had. And to do that, we're going to actually utilize a, a bit of runtime introspection, typing.getorgs, which allows us to pull the values out of a generic in, in, uh, in MyPy or any sort of typing special form. Liter is, literal is a typing special form. You could imagine, you know, dict stir stir. Uh, you would pull out the stir stir part. Uh, you had a union, it would pull out each argument of your union. Uh, but we're going to uh, utilize this to actually get the values out of the, the literal here. Now, unfortunately, this is technically a little bit type unsafe uh, because git args doesn't actually enforce operation. doesn't actually enforce that the, um, the value that you get back is the proper type. In fact, I believe it's just list of any. Uh, so actually, let's let's put a reveal type around that just to show that. Um, but then this annotation, oh, actually, I didn't call it frozen set. We need that too. Frozen set. Do frozen set reveal type too. Um, but this should, I think, I believe this is going to say type uh, list of any and or tuple of any. Oh, I mean, close enough. Tuple any list any the same deal. Um, and so. Our annotation here is actually uh, sort of downcasting that to this here. So this line is technically unsound, but we know that it's correct based on uh, looking at it. And I believe even in strict mode, uh, iPad is going to be okay with this. Conversion in and out of any is fine as long as we've properly annotated it here. Uh, but anyway, this also works basically the same way as the other one, which I think is. Uh, Pretty cool. Now there is one downside to get get args in that um, see, from typing import literal of l1 equals literal one two three, and we do from typing import get args get args of l1 that was a terrible variable name whatever um, is going to properly get us out our um, our arguments here. Great, that's that's cool. Uh, turns out you can actually define literals in a nested way, so you can say l2 equals literal literal 
literal for and then L1. And this actually represents, yeah, so you can see it actually represents a literal of all of these values here. And I'm surprised the I'm surprised that this actually the repper actually they fix this? Oh, maybe they fixed this. Huh. Okay, well this didn't used to work. <laughs> it used it used to give you four and then literal one, two, three, but it looks like huh. That's cool. It looks like literal actually folds together now. Weird. I didn't think it did this. Oh, it's cool. All right, never mind. <laughs> the thing I was gonna say is broken. It isn't actually broken. Is it really that way? In when was in literal introduced? Look, like it wasn't always this way. Hold on, we're gonna try and find three point nine. We're learning something today. <laughs> get args. So if we didn't get args of literal one, literal two, literal two, three. Oh, okay. Never mind. Maybe this just works. Weird. Okay. Anyway, get arcs seems cooler than I thought it was. Um, I guess this flattens itself, which is cool. Anyway, uh, this is just to also say that uh, union of literal one, literal two is clunky to write, and so you can just write literal one, two. Uh, you can nest them, and I guess they flatten themselves. Pretty cool. But anyway, uh, that's kind of my two solutions here. One is to utilize an enum to do the parsing. Uh, oh, I did, oh, right, right. This is out of order now. I did want to show you what happens if you try and use the other form of enum, and it doesn't seem to work for whatever reason. Enum.stir enum. The operation average. Done. This is the like functional way to define an enum which I usually like if I'm actually using an enum, enum um, but it doesn't work for this particular scenario. I think because MyPy doesn't, the, the enum plugin isn't smart enough to fold these out into literal. It technically has to split this string apart. Um, I believe I've broken this. Yeah, so it's back to the same uh, error message that we had. Before. But anyway, just want to show that. Uh, maybe that'll get fixed someday. Maybe it's a bug. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, two solutions, one using enum, one using uh, a custom narrowing using type is, as well as some runtime introspection with get args. And I thought this is pretty cool. I used this to solve um, a very similar problem at work. And this is the approach that I ended up. Although I didn't learn about this until later. So I actually had written out the frozen sets and had a little test to assert that they were the same. But um, this makes the code a little bit more succinct. Anyway, hopefully you found this cool, and I will see you for the next typing puzzle.